Hey, I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist, and in this video, I'm gonna share some tips with you for creating your daily schedule using the science of reading. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that now, and then also hit the little bell so that you're notified every time I post a brand new video about teaching literacy in K2. Okay, so first let's talk a little bit about the science of reading. Um, at the time that I'm recording this, there's a whole lot of buzz and conversation about it. The science of reading is just the body of knowledge, which is growing, right, and sometimes changing a little bit about how reading happens in the brain and what effective teaching practices are that facilitate reading, right, getting kids to acquire literacy skills. So for today's purposes, I'm not going to go into a ton of depth on the science of reading, but on my YouTube channel, there are tons of videos about the science of reading, but also about different topics like fluency, phonics, high frequency words that you can feel free to dive into. Okay, so what I am going to talk about in this video is how do you create a daily schedule using the principles of the science of reading um, and still fit everything in? Always the challenge, right? If you're needing to revamp your schedule because of what you've learned about the science of reading right now in the comments, let me know. You can just say me or if you feel like sharing a little more, I would love to read that too. Okay, so my first tip is to start with the skills. Now, this might be a little bit different from what you've done. When I say skills, I mean things like, okay, like phonological awareness, phonics and high frequency words, fluency, vocabulary, things like this. And by the way, this free schedule planner, there's a link to it in the caption for this video, so you can totally grab this. But anyway, starting with skills might be a little different than what you've done before. Perhaps before you had like read aloud, like 15 minutes, centers, you know, an hour or whatever. But instead of starting there, the method that I recommend begins with skills. Because at the end of the day, you know, while read aloud is an important tool, right? That's not the end all be all. What we're trying to accomplish in a read aloud typically is comprehension and maybe some vocabulary development too. And so we're not trying to teach our kids read aloud. We're trying to teach our kids comprehension and vocabulary. So when you start with the skills when planning your schedule, that will help in so many ways. And I kind of explain this more in the free toolkit. Um, but it will help you, number one, make sure that you're covering all your bases. But number two, if you have different resources or programs that your school provides you with, sometimes there's just not enough minutes in the day to fit it all in. But if you start with skills, then you'll be able to see like, oh, well, we're double dipping on, you know, phonemic awareness or uh, there's like a ton of comprehension work when my kids are still just learning to decode. Obviously, comprehension is important, but if you have like two programs that are spending like 30 minutes each on it, then you know you can kind of cut down. So start with the skills first. Next, you want to think about how much time you're going to spend on each skill area. So for example, if you use my toolkit, I'm kind of telling you like, okay, like 30 minutes per day for phonics and high frequency words. So that's something that you can start with, right? And then once you start seeing like how much time you're spending on certain skills, you might be able to kind of chunk it into your schedule. So if you want to spend, I don't know, like 30 minutes on phonics, for example, you might have like a 30 minute block of time between when the kids like come in in the morning and when they have specials, you can kind of start filling that in there. The next thing you want to think about, though, is teacher led and student practice time. So this is crucial to explicit instruction where you're doing some of the teaching and then you're gradually releasing responsibility to the kids for practicing whatever skill it is on their own. So in this schedule toolkit, I actually broke down like, OK, spend about this much time on teacher led instruction and guided practice and then independent student practice. And typically, I mean, independent student practice might happen right after a lesson, right? You teach something, you support students and then they practice. That's normal. It also might happen during centers. So maybe it's a skill that you've taught and the kids are practicing it on their own during centers. So when you look at the schedule toolkit, again, link is in the caption, um, don't think like you have to have like a separate block for like independent, you know, phonics practice. You want the kids to be doing like centers or independent activities and you want some of that time to be spent on phonics. But it is important to think about like, you know, how am I gonna, or when am I gonna teach my kids this skill? When are they gonna practice it with my support? And then when are they gonna practice it on their own? Super important to think about. Um, speaking of explicit instruction, that brings me to tip number four. You want to consider all components of explicit instruction. Part of explicit instruction, yes, is teaching a skill, providing modeling, being really clear on what you're teaching with the kids. 
but it's also about the gradual release. So after you teach a skill, you know, what activities are you gonna have the kids do that are scaffolded or supported so that they have your help? Because we don't wanna say, here's this skill, now you go do it on your own, right? Which is a really common habit to get into if you have a little mini lesson and then the kids are just doing like centers or independent practice there's no in between there, right? It's just kind of like, I teach you, now go do it. We have to make sure we have this stuff in the middle. The gradual release of responsibility, the supportive um, practice, us watching what they're doing, providing feedback to them, helping them correct things, that part is really crucial. This will help them gradually increase independence with using whatever skill or strategy you're teaching over time. So it's important that we have all pieces of the puzzle in explicit instruction. My fifth tip is to make sure to include time to gather data in your schedule. Now, the school day, the school week is super busy, right? But this is so crucial. If you're following the science of reading, you have to know how your kids are doing with the skills that you're teaching, right? And we have to make time to find that out. And it doesn't mean that you have like an extensive one-on-one -on -one assessment with every child every week, right? Like there's just no time for that. But think about for each of these skill areas, how are you gonna you know, collect data? It might be that kids are just writing something on a sticky note, or it might be that you're having them you know, read a list of words or everybody's spelling words. Um, a weekly dictation where you have kids spell certain words that include the phonics skills you've been teaching is a great quick way only probably takes like 10 minutes, maybe 15, to have your kids give you some information on how they're doing with what you're teaching. So as you're building your schedule, you wanna make sure to have time for that because that's also a huge component, having that assessment data of the science of reading, structured literacy, and explicit instruction too. All right, so I mentioned this free science of reading schedule toolkit this is in the or a link to get it is in the caption so make sure to grab that if i just take you step by step through my process for making a structured literacy schedule based on the science of reading it makes it really easy for you so make sure to grab that thanks so much for watching i hope that this was helpful don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and i will see you in my next video